chapter 11. I'm going to look at verses 1 through 11. Luke chapter 11. Verses 1 through 11. 1 through 13, I'm sorry. 1 through 13. Tonight and next Thursday is going to be very important that you all be here. All leaders need to be here. Uh, these two uh, teachings uh, during TNT is going to be focused on prayer. The reason why it's important is because this is to set the atmosphere and get us prepared for the month of June. And for the entire month of June on during TNT, it's going to be prayer and praise. Amen. Amen. The Lord has uh, laid it upon me um, that we as a church need to come together and pray. Amen. And so the month of June, we're going to just come and strictly pray and praise uh, during TNT. Um, Luke chapter 11, uh, beginning with verse 1, you'll discover these words. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he had ceased, one with one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, mm -hmm. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in earth, so in, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can never rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find not, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is, a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give that hope, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. Amen. Now, as I said, we're going to begin next month in prayer and praise. 
But one of the things that I've discovered as it relates to the church uh, globally, the church is good at praise and worship. Mm -hmm. The church is good for testimonies. But the church puts on the back burner prayer. Mm -hmm. How many of you have been to church, sat in the pew, and could recite the <laughs> prayer that the person was praying? <laughs> you knew before they started what they was going to say. And you just started saying it right with them as they was praying. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Now, it's a difference in a prayer of preparation and consecration. Because if you notice, when I preach, before I preach, I say the same prayer every time before I preach. Right? But it's different when you're standing and you're communicating with God for people and then you're saying the same thing. Other thing is, we don't know what to pray sometimes. Now, what the church and the world need is more prayers. When I say prayers, I'm saying P-A-R-P-R-A-Y dash E-R-S prayers people to pray and more prayer warriors. Now, we need more people who will devote themselves to prayer for the Lord. There's a story about uh, a young lumberjack and I'm sure many of you all have heard it. Uh, this young lumberjack is out there chopping down a tree and he working hard, he's swinging and swinging that axe and ain't getting very far but he's working hard, he's sweating and chipping away and everything. He was very young, he was strong, he was energetic and he was hard working but he didn't accomplish much because he was chopping the tree down with a dull axe. Now, a lot of us are just like that. We spend our time chopping away in the Lord's work, never accomplishing much for him, and all the time we're simply using a dull axe. Are y'all here with me? Sometimes the prayers that we pray are simply a dull axe. Not sharp at all. It's dull. Which means you're doing a whole lot of work, a whole lot of praying, but not getting any results. Are you following me? And sometimes we need to be able to focus in on what we're praying for toward the Lord. Too many times, you know, a lot of times our prayers are really selfish prayers. Because we only pray when we get in trouble. We don't pray when we want something. But if everything is going all right with us, we ain't got time to talk to God too much. Because we're too busy enjoying life. Are y'all here with me? And so we really need to be able to put our efforts toward God and see what it is that he needs from us. Because what we want to do is be able to operate in his will and not in ours. All right? The truth is it is much easier to get Christians to do almost anything than it is to get them to pray. When we say we get ready to get a bus and we go in the Reno. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We'd have a bus full. Amen. 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 Say we're going to Cash Creek. We'd have a bus full. Amen. And then it's justified 
You know, I really don't gamble. I'm going for the buffet. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Are y'all in here with me? But if we say come to the church, we get ready to pray. And ain't nobody coming. Are you following me? Because we put more time in the things of pleasure and what we like versus communicating with God. You know, how would you feel if the only time you, your child communicated with you is when they wanted something? If that, I mean, you you going to work, you providing, you putting a roof over their head, keeping their belly full, they got everything that they need, and they don't come to you until they want something. And usually what they want is not what they need. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Already got tennis shoes. But because they got a friend at school that just got them brand new Nikes, they want to come to you and talk about, I need some, I need some shoes, I need some shoes, I need these Nikes. And you looking at it like, I just wash some shoes. You don't need no shoes. Are y'all there with me? They're like God here. When he didn't provide everything for you, but the only time you, we talk to him is when we in trouble or when we need something. Lord, if it be your will, help me, help me get out of this. Lord, if you help me, Lord, help me, Lord, do, Lord, do, Lord. And the Lord said, you're just going to spend any time and just thank me? <laughs> It just thank me. Just it, it got the terrible just to just thank me. Don't ask me for nothing. Just thank me for what I've already done. Cause we go around and we say cliches. If he never done anything else for me, he didn't already done enough. It sounds good, but the reality is we keep asking. But we don't stop to say, Lord, thank you. Are y'all here with me? And beloved, it's a shame. That we don't spend time in prayer with God. For it is prayer that brings us into his awesome presence. Are y'all following me? Watch. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 16. It says. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Are y'all there with me? So it is the God who answers prayer that changes circumstance and touches life. It is prayer that marks the difference between mediocrity and greatness in the Christian life. Do you, let me put it this way. Some people in the church remain the same as they were when they joined because they don't pray. See, we think that praise and worship is good. But if you got praise and worship and you ain't got no prayer, then you ain't got nothing. You know why? Because the devil can praise and worship. But he ain't going to pray to God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. He's not going to communicate with God like we would. But oh yeah, you don't mind praise and worship. Remember, he was the chief praise and worship leader. Are you following me? You ain't going to beat him in praise and worship. He, he was doing that before we even got here. Mm -hmm. But what we can beat him in is prayer. And prayer is no more than communicating with God. Now, in this passage, the disciples wanted to learn more about prayer. And the Lord taught them some lessons that are as fresh tonight as if they had been just spoken. Now, I want to share uh, some, some things with you for the next two nights. 
as it relates to TNT, um, and for us to think about how to get God's ear, as we want to talk about for the next two TNTs, uh, how to get God's ear. Okay? Now, first thing, how to get God's ear is you got to have a proper motive. Are you following? Your motive has to be proper. Prayer must come from a heart that is properly motivated. See, everybody that pray, pray is not motivated in the right reason. Okay? Some people pray just to receive. But it's not spiritual. Okay? You have to be spiritually minded when you pray. See, some people pray to sick people up for God to, to sit on people. Get them, God. And then they want to say, you know what your words say. Your words say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Get them. Don't let them do this to me. No, that's, that's improper prayer. He said, love them as you would love yourself. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to sit God on you. That's right. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. You ain't going to tell God, get me. <laughs> God, you know what I did. Get me. Don't let me get away with that. No, you're not going to do that to yourself. So why would you do it to somebody else? God ain't answering that prayer. And what you've now done is put something in between you and God. Because now you've demonstrated that your heart ain't right. Turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. It says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight a war. Yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Wrong motivation. Okay? The disciples, remember this now, the disciples had just witnessed Jesus praying. They noticed the closeness he had with the Father. They witnessed the miracles that he had performed. Now, one of the things that's real important here is, notice, the disciples witnessed him praying. Did you catch that? They witnessed him praying. And because they witnessed what he did in prayer and how close he was to the Father, it compelled them to ask, to teach me. When was the last time somebody asked you to teach them? Mm -hmm. Come on now, soldiers. We've been in the church for a long time. We've been churching a long time, haven't we? Amen. But when was the last time somebody asked us, teach me how to pray, show me? You know why? Because they don't see us. They don't see us exemplify what we talk about. Mm -hmm. And it's a sad commentary for believers to be believers and other people are not motivated by what they see in us. Mm -hmm. I know this may be a little hard tonight, but we got to get right as it relates to our communication with God. Because other people are watching. The, the Bible says that they watched him. Mm -hmm. And just as they watch Jesus, there are folk that are watching us to see how we carry ourselves. If somebody on your job or on the street asked you to pray for them, could you? Amen. 
See, see, I remember back, back home, uh, uh, the late uh, Reverend uh, uh, Hawkins, Alfred Hawkins, pastor of the Upper Room Baptist Church, and uh, I'll never forget uh, Pastor Isaiah Paul, who uh, was pastor in Tabernacle at the time, uh, was out of town. And he asked Pastor Hawkins to handle the Bible study that night. And uh, Pastor Hawkins uh, went to school, but he wasn't degree. Uh, Pastor Paul was a degreed man. And so he was wondering what he was going to be able to teach uh, based upon the education that Pastor Paul had, what he was going to teach, teach that uh, tabernacle. And so he's always been very creative. He was always creative. On his way to work, he, not on his way to work, but on his way to Bible study, there was a, a, a bar up the street on Copley Road that was called the Wind Jammer. And he pulled his truck into the wind jammer and talked to the owner and asked the owner, did he have any um, empty uh, liquor bottles? He said, I'm doing something at church. He said, I, I, I need some. He said, well, I got some. He said, just got a little bit. He said, that's fine. He said, give me what you got. And what he, did, he started pouring it on his clothes and pouring it all over him. And took the empty bottle and put it in his in his coat because it was it was winter time, and he put it in his coat. And so, Tabernacle used to be an old IGA, a Kroger store, and so the front was glass. And he came driving with that truck, swerving back and forth in that parking lot, back and forth, and being almost like he was going to run through the through them glass windows. And stopped abruptly with the light shining, flew open the door, and started staggering out and coming into the church. He walked up to the altar and fell. He said, Hello. And he talking like he drunk. He just, he just performing. He said, I, I just want to be saved. Somebody help me. I just want to be saved. Somebody lead me to Christ. I just want to be saved. And they thought he was drunk because you smelled it all on him. They, he had the bottle in his hand. And they all came around him. Praying and laying hands and talking this, that, and the other. But ain't nobody led him. Mm. Until he got tired and stood up and said, all oh, y'all get away from me. He said, the problem is we come to church. But we don't know how to win anybody. Mm. We don't know how to minister to anybody when they're in trouble and when they're hurting. Here I was coming in as a pastor that had fallen, a messed up, and couldn't nobody that's been in the church help me. Mm. Isn't that a sad comment? Yeah. To come and shout mm. and worship mm -hmm. and praise God. But then when real ministry needs to be done, it can't be done. If you got a prayer life with God, you don't have to be highly educated and have to have a whole lot of Bible verses memorized to be effective. Because them old folk from the South and other places across this country that did not have education had God. Are y'all in here with me? And, 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 and y'all probably heard this before about, about a young man that came up and had been schooled uh, in music and they brought him in to sing Amazing Grace and he got up there with his education and his diction and everything and sang Amazing Grace. The house applauded. He did a marvelous job. But then an old mother 
got up. And she came on up. And she hit that same song. Split verbs. And the house was a mess afterward. Folk was crying and shouting and falling all over the place. You know why? Because he had the form, but he didn't have the spirit. Y'all right. ain't gonna help. Right. See, in that church, we got the form of prayer, but not the spirit of prayer. Okay. See, the spirit of prayer will take you into a place, but the form of prayer will leave you in the proof, in the pew. Going, hmm. <laughs> Y'all gonna be real with me. Y'all ever heard a prayer that said, mm. Mm, Right. <laughs> y'all ain't, ain't, ain't gonna talk to me. Mm, but see, 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 see. But when a spirit filled prayer go forth, mm -hmm. it's more than, mm. Because it's some eyes crying and you wiping and you rocking from side to side. Something didn't happen because the spirit of the prayer has touched your spirit. Are you following? Mm -hmm. But on, that only comes. With real communication with God. Amen. Now the disciples, I said, they witnessed what he had done. They witnessed the miracles. The feeding of the 5,000. Matthew chapter 15. The transfiguration. Luke chapter 9. The raising of Lazarus. John chapter 11. They, they, they witnessed stuff from the master. Are y'all following me? And so... Because of what they witnessed and the power that took place. Are you following? See, if you notice, any time Jesus did something, he prayed. Are y'all here with me? And then after he prayed, there was a result. Church, we want to do and then pray. See, instead of praying... And then looking for the result after prayer, we want to do first. And then once we've done, then we want to pray and ask God to bless what we didn't know. Hmm. God is saying, you got it backwards. You should have prayed to me first. Amen. 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 And then watch what I've done. Are you following? Now, so they saw the power of prayer, lived out, and the glory it brought to God. Point. The glory that it brought to God. Right, right. You cannot do things for your glory. Right. And in the church, we got too many glory seekers. Amen. Everybody won't do something, but they want their name called. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. <laughs> Why, you know, I did such and such and such. Are you following me? Well, yeah. And God bless you. Amen. <laughs> but why are you really doing it? Are you doing it for the glory of God? Or are you doing it for the glory of you? See, if you're doing it for the glory of you, then you hinder us yeah. Yeah. as a church. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The reason why we're hindered, we would be hindered as a church, is because God is not getting ready to bless those who want the glory. Are you following? Amen. The Bible says he's a jealous God. Amen. Thou shalt not have any other God before me. Right? right? He wants all the glory. We can't take the glory. We can't steal glory from him. So you can't do stuff for glory to say, this is what I've done. And then expect God to breathe on it and bless it. Okay? Notice what their request is. Their request is not just about how to pray. But they specifically say, teach us to pray. Are you able? Beloved, all I'm saying is we need to learn to pray. Amen. Amen. They say it, teach us. Which means that you're open if you want to be taught. Mm -hmm. 
In the church, we got too many people that know everything. Mm. They know everything. Can't teach them nothing. Amen. Are you following me? Won't follow anything mm. because they know the right way. Right. And then if you don't do it the way they want you to do it, then they get mad and go home and stay. <laughs> Let them have it. They think that's the way they They ain't got to worry about me. Let them have it. They're not glorifying God. God can't get any glory out of that. But what it does, once again, it reveals who you are. And it also reveals your real relationship with the Father. Because when you are in constant communication with the Father, you understand that this thing is bigger than you, it ain't about you, and so it don't matter. It don't matter if your name is called, it don't matter if somebody else got an idea that's better than yours, it don't matter. Because at the end of the day, we all here to please God. Are you following me? Now, when we talk about that they remembered, they remembered what they saw Jesus do. But they also remembered John the Baptist. They remembered his prayer life. They saw his prayers result in the glory of God. Notice, everything is about God. Nobody else. John the Baptist was so he wouldn't he didn't even want to baptize Jesus, remember? Right. Because it wasn't about him. He said, I'm unworthy. And then the message that he was sending to everybody is that one, there's one that's coming. That's greater than I. Are you following me? But in the church we can't see nobody greater than us. Mm. Because I've been here. You just got here. You don't know how this thing works. But I'm going to teach you. You just hang with me. Are you following? And what happens in the global church is that person does not know that they've just been pulled into a clique. Because only clique folk Tell other folk, come on, I'm going to work with you. Are, you. are you here with me? Because the church is a spiritual organism. And we all ought to be working together for one goal. It shouldn't be a group over here working their own agenda, and another group over here working their own agenda, and another group over here working their own agenda. Because what happens is you got little churches inside one church. And that's, how, that's where confusion comes. Because God is for the one church, but he ain't recognizing all the other little churches. And all the other little churches don't realize that they're under the influence of the enemy. God is not the pastor the enemy is. Are you following me? That's why when your name ain't called, you get upset because the enemy pastor said, how dare it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are y'all going to talk? <laughs> how dare they not call your name? All that you've been doing, they act like they don't know you would have been up all night doing this. Are you following? Mm -hmm. That's the enemy pastor giving that kind of influence to the little churches in the church that he pastors. But how you eliminate the little churches in the church is through a constant prayer life. Because what happens when you have a constant prayer life and you're in communication with the Father, you begin to take on the attributes of the Father. Right. And when you take on the attributes of the Father, you gain more spiritual knowledge. And when you gain more spiritual knowledge, your spiritual discernment in and so you're able to see it before it comes. All right. Are y'all in here with me? Those of you that have been in prayer and have grown in the knowledge of God, 
There are some things you can see now before it even get to. Yeah. Yeah. And you're able to identify it as mess. Mm -hmm. So, oh no, I ain't really bothered with that. I, I can see that coming. In the words of my daddy, I didn't seen that child before. Are y'all following me? And, and, and that's how I feel sometimes in churches, globally. We have seen it for so long, and we've accepted it. Because we've made it part of the norm of Christendom, when it shouldn't be. Are y'all in here with me? Now, the proper motive for prayer is not to get our will done in heaven but to get God's will done in the earth through us. A lot of times we want to get what we want done in heaven. We ain't trying to do nothing in the earth. Everything about us getting to heaven. All we want to do is go to heaven. When I can read my titles clear to mansions in the sky I'll bid farewell to every fear and wipe my weeping eye. We want to bow up with wings as an eagle and fly away and be at rest. I'm just holding on to my change come. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all ain't like y'all ain't been churching long. But what we gonna do down here until then? Are you following me? There's work to be done down here. We didn't get saved just so we could get to heaven and shout. We all want to go to heaven. We want to shout, sing, hallelujah. I can't wait to see his face. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I ain't in no heaven. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all can be all super spiritual if you want to. Go on and meet him. I ain't ready yet. I love it. Amen. And when I do, I'm gonna be happy. But I ain't in no rush. Amen. Now, because I ain't in no rush, mean that I need to be productive while I'm here. Amen. Yeah. I want him to say, you know, that boy's a hard worker. Amen. Let me give him something else to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That boy ain't worth a quarter. <laughs> he ain't doing nothing. Let me call that boy on home. <laughs> no, don't call me. Amen. 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 I want to live a long, productive life. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. Now, we got to work while we're here. The Bible says work while in day. For the night cometh when no man can work. But a whole lot of church folk want to sleep during the day. Amen. I do stuff. What do you mean? I mean absolutely. Preaching going forward. <sighs> Teaching going forward. Singing going, hey, glory. What you got in you? Cause when you were supposed to get something in you. See, cause you can do this on the TV. I mean, you can get this in the car. Got your favorite CDs? Got your DVDs? Got 1190? Amen. You got yourself in the shower? Don't act like y'all don't sing in the shower. Everybody got their shower voice. You in concert. Amen. Amen. Come out the shower looking for an offering. Amen. 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 Put the 
problem is we don't get enough word deposited into us. Because prayer and word go together. Amen. Are y'all here with me? Now, I'm going to repeat this. The proper motive for prayer is not to get our will done in heaven, but to get God's will done in the earth through us. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says, Wherefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Watch. Did y'all turn there? Because you need to see this. You need to see. It says, do all to the glory of God. Did nobody catch it? So I'm going to say it again. Do all to the glory of God. Did nobody catch it? Again? I'm going to say it again. Do all to the glory of God. I hear, I hear y'all talking back to me, but I wanted to y'all understand. Do all to the glory of God. That means the majority of your life is outside this building. See, we're willing to do all in here. But it didn't say do all in here. It said just do all to the glory of God. It didn't say do all in church. It said do all to the glory of God. Which means that when you're outside these doors... Whatever it is that you do, you ought to do it to the glory of God. Amen. God can't get no glory when you cuss him for God. I thought that was a good place to run. He can't get that glory. He can't get that glory when you act in a fool. I said acting a fool because that covers a multiplicity of things. And I ain't got to go down no list. Because every one of us knows some foolish stuff that we done done. You notice I said we. That made me too, right? Amen. God can't get no glory in that. And if you remember what we talked about at the beginning, they were watching Jesus. And so they're watching us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't say nothing when you do your all to the glory of God. But it's that one time that you know mm -hmm. that the enemy say, mm -hmm, there it is. Mm -hmm. And then they run with it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, this is not to say that you're going to be perfect. I tell y'all all the time, you can't be perfect. There's only one that's perfect. You cannot be perfect. So don't let the enemy beat you up because you messed up. But don't get twisted to do all. Don't do all until you want to do what you want to do. That's what we do. We do all for God until we want to do what we want to do. And then we want God to turn a blind eye. Hmm. You don't see me. And God is just like in a Tyler Perry movie. I can see you. <laughs> Amen. God is right there talking about, I see you. And for some reason, we don't think he's looking. <laughs> we don't think he sees but he's watching as well as other people. And that's why when we do fall short, if we got good communication with the Father, we can always go back. Are you following me? There had never been a time that my wife and I, our kids, couldn't come to us. You know why? Because they had open communication. Are you following? We wasn't a big bad wolf. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
they also knew there were consequences. Amen. But they also knew that they could come. Now, if they chose to or didn't, that was on them. Right. Now, there's stuff they didn't come to us with. They went to each other. <laughs> and now that they're grown, we find out a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> y'all <are> lying. <laughs> are y'all <here? laughs> But the point is, they could. <laughs> Because the line of communication was open. Tia, tell you right now that she could talk to me about anything. I mean, it, I mean absolutely anything. Are y'all following me? Wasn't no judgment. Wasn't no, ooh, wasn't no, wasn't no shock look. Wasn't no, you know why? Because I'm the father. Mm -hmm. And the child ought to be able to come to the father with whatever load you got. Mm -hmm. Somebody missed it. Right. Because of your relationship with your heavenly father, regardless of where you are in life, you ought to be able to come to him and share with him whatever because you got relationship. Mm -hmm. But if you don't communicate with him, and you don't talk with him, it's hard to come to him. You know why? Because now you feel bad. Mm -hmm. That's just like when a child mess up and you put them on punishment, and then they want to try to walk around the house like you ain't in the house. <laughs> <laughs> You stand at the refrigerator, they're gonna walk right by the refrigerator where you at. Like, like you ain't there. <laughs> ain't got nothing to say. All swole up. And you don't say nothing, you let them just go on about their business. But now they want something. But for two weeks they've been swole up. Acting like that. See, uh uh. Now, now they want something. But now they don't know how to come to you. Because they didn't tell their mind. Right. Are you following? And that's how we are as Christians. We tear our behind with God and then we go on and then we don't know how to come. Because we ain't been in no communication. The Bible said you ought to pray daily. Amen. There ought to be daily communication with God. Amen. You communicate with the folk in your house daily. Amen. Maybe. Hands are shaking that head, no. No, y'all see. See, that's why we need prayer. Y'all are mess. And so that's what happens. And so we got to really focus in on being pleasing to God through our prayer life. Amen? Amen. And so when we get an effective prayer line, you watch and see what God will do for us. God wants to do something miraculous for our church. Amen? Amen. But we got to communicate with him in prayer. Amen? We're not going to do and then ask God, bless this. We're going to seek God and then see what he's going to do. Amen. Because we're praying. And already asked. Amen? Amen? Okay. We'll finish this next week. Okay? Uh, let us stand to our feet. Any announcements? Sean, good to see you, man. Amen.